Hi there! In this video I'm gonna demonstrate an easy way how you can migrate from a legacy input system to the new input system. For demonstration I'm gonna use this project and this project is part of a tutorial that I did on first person controller. I'll convert it from using the legacy system to the new input system. The first thing that we need to do is go to the package manager find the input system and install it. After the import is done, we get this message saying that you want to restart to disable the old input system. So I click yes to disable it. You actually can have both of them enabled, but in this case, I'm gonna disable the old API system and just use the new one. So there you go, my project restarted and now we should be able to use the input system. So the easiest way that I found that you can migrate to the new input system with the simple setup that I have here for the first person control is by going to our player and adding a component, player input. And for this component, we need to add the input actions. And if you click create actions from here, and I'll just call it my inputs, it's gonna create a new file, my inputs, and I can drag and connect it here. The cool thing that happens when you create it like that, you actually get an input system with some default settings. So if we open it up, you can see that we have some action maps here player action map and UI action map. I'm not gonna be using the UI action map, I'm just gonna be using the player. And for the player, if we take a look, we have the move action, a look action, and a fire action, which are the ones that are mostly used in the legacy input system. The move action is a vector two, so X and Y, and the look is also X and Y. The fire is actually a button, and you can expand and see all the presets that we have here. So we have the gamepad preset, the touchscreen preset, joystick, and also the mouse left button for fire. For the move, we have the WSD and it also includes arrows here as well. One thing to note is that WSD is actually digitally normalized, so you don't have to normalize the output. And for the look, what we have here is delta pointer, which is equivalent to what we had previously for mouse X and mouse Y. The move is equivalent to horizontal and vertical movement. So what I'm gonna do is actually use this default preset. It makes it much easier for me to implement it. And for listening to those inputs, we have a couple options. So right here we have behavior. By default, it's set to send message. And here is the list of messages that would be sent if you just leave it like that. But I'm gonna use the invoke Unity events instead. And this option gives you the ability of connecting specific methods that you wanna call. So let's go to our script now. And in here we can create those methods. So I'll just create one for on move. I need to add using Unity engine inputs. So let's do that. And let's create the same thing for on look. So now whenever there's a change in our values for move or look, it's gonna be triggering these methods. If you want to see the explanation of the code that I have right here, there's a link in the description and you can get more information in the tutorial where I made this code. But the things that I have here is rotation. So this is the look portion of it. Then I have the movement and the jump. And what I have to do now is replace the usage of this input everywhere. I'll start with the look or the rotation part of it. When this onLook method gets triggered, we get a callback context and we can retrieve the value that is passed through that input. Now the value will be based on what you have selected in the action options. And for onLook, we have a vector two, same as on move. So what I'm gonna do is create a vector two variable. So let's go right here and let's add a vector two variable and I'll call it input look. I'll initialize it to vector two zero and let's go ahead and do the same thing for move because we'll need it later on. So we'll just add another vector two that is gonna be input move. Now inside this method, the way that I can retrieve that value is by saying value, read value and pass the type of value that I wanna read. In this case, it's a vector two. So just by doing this, we get the input look value. I'll do the same thing on move, get that vector two. And now in our update, we can start using those input values. To rotate right and left, instead of using mouse X, now I'm gonna use the input look, the X axis, and for looking up and down, I'm gonna use the input look in the Y axis. Now the scale of the value input look is different than what we had for mouse X. You will need to adjust it based on the sensitivity that you're looking for. So in my case, I'm gonna multiply by 0 0.02 and same thing for the Y axis. So with that, we switch the inputs for rotation. Now let's switch the inputs for the movement. So right here where I have horizontal, I'm gonna use input move dot x and for vertical i'm gonna use input move dot y 
I already mentioned that the move value is normalized because we have it turned on to normalize. So I can remove that normalized. And that's the changes that we need to do for movement. Now the values that we're getting for the inputs are not smoothed in any way. So if you want to smooth those changes, you would want to use lerp to add some smoothness to your movement and your rotation. And we'll come back and do that in a little bit. Now the last thing that I have that is using the input is our jump. And in here, I'm actually getting the input, get key down and looking at the space key. You could go and create another action and use that. And that's probably the better route to go. But I'm not going to do that because I want to show you that you can do the same approach that we are doing here with the new input system as well. So to check if the key was pressed or not, what we can do is get keyboard and then we can get the current keyboard, which is the current active keyboard. In here, we can get the space key. So right there we have the space key and in space key, we can get a Boolean value was pressed this frame. So this right here is equivalent to what we had with the legacy input system. That's the last change that we need to do. Now we can go back to Unity and we need to connect those events. So let's click add, drag any of these components and we're looking for connecting on move. And now we'll need to do the same thing for on look. So those methods are connected. For jump, we're listening for that space key. And one more thing that I have to do in my project is disable other game objects that are listening for some kind of input because they're going to be thrown errors. When migrating from the legacy input system to the new input system, you need to migrate everything. So that's why it's easier to just use the new input system on the new project. But in simple cases like this, you can migrate it with ease. The look sensitivity is a little bit too slow. You need to add some sensitivity to it. And here is our keyboard movement. That looks right and our space bar is still working. The movement and the look is very snappy because there is no smooth effect at all. Now let's go back and try to add smooth to our input. So the way that I'm going to add smooth is by going right here and I'll add two more variables. These are going to be the raw values and the raw values are going to be the ones that we're going to be getting in our methods. Now in the update, the first thing that I'm going to do is smooth those inputs. And the way you can do it is by doing a vector two dot lerp and for a I'll pass input look and for vector B I'll pass input look raw and then I need to pass a value of T. I want it to be frame independent so I'll do time delta time and I'll multiply by a multiplier so I'll do five the bigger the number the less smooth it's going to be so you can play with that number to get what you're looking for and I'll do the same thing for move. So these two lines are going to be making our input smoother. And in here, since we didn't change it to use input ROM, we don't have to change anything. But I said that I want to increase the sensitivity of my look. So I'll just increase it to five. And here, let's set it to three. Let's test it and see how it works. And then I'll show more improvements that you can do to it that I found in six hours that I was trying to improve the smoothness. So right here, you can see that if I move the mouse, it moves much smoother and there is a smooth start and the smooth slowdown. That looks good. Now, if I move, it works good as well. But there's still a problem if you rotate and move at the same time. You can see that it's jittery and sometimes it does a big jump. So one thing to keep in mind in Unity, when you're testing your player, you need to make sure that the player is not actually selected. So currently I have the player selected and the inspector values are shown. And that is one of the reasons why you would see jittering in the game preview. So if I unselect my player and try now, it's hard to see that something changed, but there is a change and it will be more visible when I'll smooth out the other jittering as well. The other jittering is because of the auto sync of the update loop and the physics loop. I do have interpolation turned on for my player, so it should compensate for some of that, but it's still struggling based on how my script is written. So let's go into the script and I'll show you some of the improvements that I did. First of all, Lerp is probably not the best solution for smoothing, but I'm not gonna be focusing too much on that. One thing that you do need to change for the Lerp to work correctly for the input look is dividing it by the time delta time. Now this probably sounds very weird because usually you multiply by time delta time, but in this case, since the value that we're getting from our look is based on how many pixels the pointer has moved. 
it will create a problem when your frame rate goes down. So that's why I divide it by time delta time to actually get the change per second. That way, when I'm lerping, it will use more appropriate scaled values here. Now there's some changes that I did how I use the rigid body. So in theory, the way that you're supposed to divide what goes into the update and fixed update, all your inputs are supposed to go to update and all of your changes to the rigid body needs to go into the fixed update. Now I did try to do all of that, but it didn't give me the best result. The best result that I got was by changing the transform rotate to actually rotate the rigid body. And this switch right here is basically what got rid of that jittering. Now, if I would put this into the fixed update, the jittering would appear back. So that's why I have it here. Also, a quick note, since I divided the input look by time delta time, I multiplied the time delta time back in here. Same thing for the rotate up. The only change that I did here was get that time delta time. For the velocity, just left it as it was. Again, I tried to move the velocity calculation in the fixed update and that still gave me jittering. The only thing that I was able to move to the fixed update was actually the jump. So I changed how the jump works. So I have a jump variable that I set if the jump needs to be triggered and the player rigid body velocity was moved to the fixed update. So now inside the fixed update, that's what I have velocity dot y equals to the player rigid velocity. So getting the velocity that I was using back here in the jump. And then if jump is currently true, then I set velocity to five because that's the speed that I want the jump to be. And I set jump to false. So it would jump only once and then set the player rigid body velocity to velocity. Now that's all the changes that I did. I tried a whole bunch of different variations trying to figure out what was the best way. And this was the best result that I was able to get. Now let's go and I'll show you what is the difference. I have the player selected right now. So I expect to see the jittering still. So we still have the look working and the movement is fine. And now you can see that the jittering is still there. Now let me unselect the player, go back here. And now you can see that it's much smoother. There is some issue that you might get from using the new input system for the look. It sometimes gives a positive value when your mouse is actually moving only in the negative direction. So that creates some weird jump. But if you build the game, the problem goes away. So I think it's something to do with the Unity editor. So let's go and build the game right now. So here is the build game and you can see that it's pretty smooth. The movement of the player, you can't see that jittering. The player jumps. So really satisfied with this result. Again, I used a rigid body for this player movement. And I do want to try out and see how it's going to work with a character controller to compare if it's smoother with a character controller or with a rigid body. So I hope you found this video useful. Click on the like button if you did. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.